Hey friends, it's Akiris, and welcome everybody to another episode of Otaku Monthly Favorites. Hey, Where at the end of every month, I share with you guys different anime series, manga, movies, and other different anime and otaku related things that I've been introduced to within that given month. A lot of really cool things happened this month. One of the biggest highlights was that we reached $5,000 on our charity live stream for Hurricane Harvey. Super awesome, we got to unbox fan mail, got to wax Joey's legs, they're so shiny. Look at that smooth. It's like a baby's butt. Uh, th other things that are smooth. It's like the back of a spoon. <laughs> That really went beyond our expectations. It was awesome just getting the community to do something for just this terrible event that happened. We streamed pretty close to eight hours. And for those of you that didn't know and might be wondering, yes, Joey and I also contributed our own money. We gave $500 each on our end. So again, thank you guys for attending. We're hoping to get the community really involved in other projects in the future. So getting into the Otaku Monthly favorites, I'm gonna be sharing you guys a manga and a light novel that I've been introduced to this month. So cue that cute transition. I read this month was Welcome to the Ballroom, and I also managed to watch the first episode. Funny enough, Bookwalker, that company I'm always shouting out, they gave me like the first three volumes of Welcome to the Ballroom because maybe they thought it would catch my attention, and I faintly remember them saying, this anime is gonna come out later in the year, try and read these if you like them, in hopes maybe I would review it for the future. So Welcome to the Ballroom is about this student named Sengoku, and he doesn't really know what to do with his life. All of his teachers and his family are asking, hey, you know what? You're you're getting to that age where you should at least start planning an idea of what you want to do. And like many of us, many of us young lost people in the world were like, I, I don't know. Fast forward through the story, he's eventually finding himself introduced to ballroom dancing classes. But the introduction of Welcome to the Ballroom has at least accomplished showing why this sport is both beautiful and requires a lot of discipline and shows at least maybe like the basis of even the simplest moves being sometimes the most complex. So in the first episode, you have the character who has to learn boxing and he spends the entire night trying to master just this one part. You even have one of the characters being like, shouldn't you show him something a little bit more fun? And he's like, nope, let him learn. The next morning you see Sengoku spent all night learning this simple move and you already see that he's taken a huge interest into ballroom dancing, which to me I thought was just a really great introduction to just that sport. I haven't gone past the first episode or the manga yet, but I think it had a really strong introduction and to be honest, uh, please don't get pissed at me, even though I know some of you might, but I honestly am a lot more hooked to this than I was on Yuri on Ice. Maybe I'll make a separate video talking about sports anime, I don't know. But yeah, let me know in the comment section down below of what you guys think of Welcome to the Ballroom. The second thing I want to introduce you guys to is a light novel that has probably my my bae, my best girl for this month. Well, not even this month. This is like a series that I've been continuing. So I wanted to just start you guys off with it. It's called Cycle Man. It labels itself as a romantic comedy. The story of Cycle Man goes like this. So we have our main character, Kyosuke, who is apparently falsely accused of a murder that he didn't do of 12 people. And after being judged guilty, he's sentenced to attend what is called the Purgatorium School of Rehabilitation. This is a place where underage juvenile convicts go when they've committed murder or some kind of felony and so hopefully by them attending this school then they can be cleansed or changed of their ways in order to go back into society and live their lives normally and Kyosuke's goal here is to either a be proven innocent and just be taken out of the school or to graduate the entire thing and go back into society but most of all three trying to make it out alive because he's in a school where everyone else has been deemed a murderer and in his individual classroom he's seen as the biggest killer because he has the highest number of kills that has been put on him. 12 people! That, that's a lot. So that's some big pressure to have on a character and he doesn't really know if he should just say, oh, I'm not a murderer because maybe that might deem him as weak to everybody else. But if he admits to it, maybe nobody will want to mess with him. But at the same time, he's kind of living a lie that he doesn't really want to go by. Now to one specific interesting part. This girl comes by who right now is my best girl. 
or for a while now, or for like the past couple of months. She is, she is Bay. She goes by Renko Hikawa, and she is just this huge psychotic killer. When she takes off her mask, she becomes just this rabid killing machine. And then she's in love with our main character, Kyosuke, but he doesn't love her back. And just that, that's, that's kind of the reason why she won't kill him. Also, she has this like abnormal obsession with her breasts. Fan service! So if any of you are looking for recommendations for light novels, Cycle Meh, highly suggest it. I believe that there's some physical copies that you can get. I failed to see it in Barnes & Noble. If you guys want a digital copy, it's available also on Bookwalker, and you guys can get $5 off if you guys use Akidiris. They're not necessarily sponsoring this video, but if you guys use the code, it helps out the industry, it helps out the creator, and it helps out the channel. So go watch Psychomet, and it, those of you that have read it, let me know in the comment section down below of your thoughts on it. It's so overlooked. I, I really hope it does get a lot more recognition. Let's go into this next segment, anime series. Cue that cute transition. Other than that, I haven't really tried anything else new. I'm already trying to keep up with Kakegurui, Koi to Uso. There is one thing though I've been watching and it's a music video and it's a music video that went super viral. It's by Daoko, the girl that sang Mi 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 and Girl. So I got a notification saying that she uploaded a new music video and after I watched it, I was like, that was a beautiful song, and the scenes of whatever this anime film is were so fitting. It blew up, especially in Japan, and I think it has over like 20 million views now. And just watching this beautiful music video, of course, like, I'm going to be inclined to want to know, oh, what is this anime film about? And unfortunately, from what Mother's Basement and his girlfriend told me was that it apparently got slammed at the box office. I don't know if that's true, but from what I've been seeing online, it doesn't really have the best ratings in the world. The movie is called Fireworks, Should We See It From The Side or The Bottom? And since this is based off of like a classic live action that's in Japan, one of my theories is also maybe like a comparison of the live action and also being turned into this anime film. But I'm still gonna watch it, maybe I'll have a differentiating opinion, maybe I'll turn out to really like it. But just the music video, by itself, I've been putting it on repeat since the day it even came out, so I would highly recommend you guys checking that music video out. Some last things I'm gonna add here is I've seen the Death Note Netflix live action adaptation and you know, my thoughts on it were like, <clears throat> no really, I, I actually think it was bad. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it, not even as a movie itself did I even think it was good. The only thing I will credit though that I thought was cool was that the cinematography was really well done. I have a list here. Uh, the death scenes, the branding Kira scenes. I mean, you guys tell me, should I add to what everyone else has been saying and make a video with my own opinions about Death Note Netflix? Let me know in the comment section down below. Came out with the new Aki Dares merchandise if you guys haven't heard already. And I also received the No Game No Life Zero limited edition art book. My good friend and also fellow YouTuber, Soul Animation was in Japan. He went to go see the movie and also got me some merch from there. Oh my goodness, like I hope that this comes out soon in English sub. I really want it to. See that? It's like got this holographic film on it. So thank you so much, Soul Animation, for getting me this. You fucking rock. I love you. So that was everything that I was introduced to for this episode of Otaku Monthly Favorites. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys liked what you saw. So if you guys have any thoughts on the things that you've seen in this video, or if you guys want to suggest anything else to me for the next month Otaku Monthly Favorites, let me know in the comment section down below of this video, or go follow me on Twitter at AkiDearest. So I appreciate you guys for watching, and subscribe to my channel for more anime and Otaku-related content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!